All induction drugs have the potential of hyperstimulating the uterus and, and causing uh, fetal distress, even um, fetal death. They, they can also rupture the uterus, so they have to be used with care. The 1990s was a decade when induction rate in the U.S. doubled from about 10% to 20%. During that decade, two drugs were introduced that were approved by the FDA, Cervidil and Prepidil. Each of those was duly tested on pregnant women and deemed safe enough for use. Uh, they cost a two to three hundred dollars to use. They also were able to be removed so that if they started to hyperstimulate and have bad effects on the mother, they could be that could be canceled. That was not true for Cytotec in many cases. It was a little white pill, sometimes used whole with sometimes bad results and sometimes cut in half or in quarters, and there were still some bad results that were reported in uh, the studies that were quickly thrown out there. Small numbers, not well designed, and not really fully read by the medical community. So we had a problem. It was already popular, and there were some adverse reports that went to the FDA, that uh, were reported by its manufacturer after a Cytotec widower uh, got a huge lawsuit settlement. That prompted Cyril, the manufacturer, manufacturer to, uh, to release a letter to every health care or every maternity care provider in the U.S. detailing the bad effects it could have, including maternal death and fetal death. Uh, hysterectomy, loss of fertility, uh, near loss of life, and so on. ACOG, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, reacted to the Cyril letter uh, by pressuring Congress, congressional leaders, to put pressure on the FDA to pass pressure on to Cyril, the manufacturer, to withdraw its letter. This was really extraordinary in, in, my, uh, in my opinion. I don't know of anything similar to that happening uh, at any other time. And let's remember, Cytotec was so cheap, 25 cents worth of the pill versus two to three hundred dollars for the FDA approved drugs. ACOG kept telling Congress and the public that Cytotec was safe. It had to know better. It had to know better. Same time we had rates of amniotic fluid embolism. This is a catastrophic complication of uh, of uh, labor usually uh, that used to have a incidence of one in 50 to 80,000 births and it it became the second leading cause of maternal death as reported uh, by uh, Massachusetts public health officials uh, way back okay now uh, one hospital in Arizona reported that amniotic fluid embolism occurred one in 6,500 births. A Los Angeles researcher reported in 1995 that even with the smallest dose of Cytotec, uh, there could be long latent effects in some women in excess of 20 hours. This was unheard of with any other uh, labor induction drug being used. The following year, that same researcher reported two near, near maternal deaths from 
um, loss of total loss of tone in the uterus. In one case, 13 hours after the single dose was given, and in one case, 30 hours after. Both women's lives were saved only by hysterectomy and subsequent, of course, loss of their fertility. That was the same study, by the way, that reported and excused away the one maternal death that we have in the English language literature. The only other maternal death reported was in the Venezuelan Obstetrical Journal. Really not much use or recognition given that by uh, U.S. obstetricians. So quite a problem. I want to talk a little bit about our system of uh, maternal mortality reporting in the United States. We, unlike other industrialized countries, have lots and lots of holes in our system. Some other countries, such as France, um, discovered holes in theirs and took some steps to re uh, repair those holes. But nobody had a problem like we do with 50 states having different data gathering instruments. I'm talking about death certificates here. And these have to do with whether or not a death is even recorded as such. I mean, a maternal death is recorded as such, because, of course, women of childbearing age can die from lots of different causes. Uh, other countries tend to have more autopsies. Uh, other countries they have a culture of honesty and integrity, and we don't. Uh, we've never had any sort of high standard. The Centers for Disease Control has tried uh, within it, its power to improve our reporting, but it only gets raw numbers from the state. It has no way to audit or to really come back and review our 50 states. Only a few of them have any system of maternal mortality review, um, bringing in all the, uh, the medical and social records of a deceased woman to suss out why she died could it be prevented, and how do we make recommendations to carry on the future so we learn from this death and we prevent the preventable deaths? So how is it that a healthy young woman like Tasha Oden French can go to her obstetrician, a little bit overdue, but uh, that's, a, that's a soft, it's even soft to say overdue, because she was healthy. She had no signs that anything was going wrong with the pregnancy. She was urged by her obstetrician to take the drug, and she was not likely to take one without thought. She thought it, when her obstetrician said that the baby could die if she didn't, only that persuaded her. Well, we know what happened. She, now, what could she have done? How could she have found out? She would have had to go to the FDA website, which had, how, how could she track that? How could she find out how to make her uh, consent informed? Now, the FDA, from because of pressure, partly, or I think in great measure, from the, the Odin family, uh, in 2000, we had this. Can be serious effects. Death of mother and baby. The only justification for using it was to prevent the death of the baby. Now we get the death of both. How many times has this happened? We have no way of knowing. The 13 deaths that I know about that were sent to me with, so that a quilt piece could be made for the Self Safe Motherhood Quilt Project were given by family members or sometimes somebody who witnessed the death, okay? I have more than is in the medical literature. This is really disturbing and something needs to be done about this. What can be done? 
maternity care providers across the country need to inform themselves. They need to understand that we could work together. We have the tools that we could induce labors when they're needed and not to do it for convenience. That is not ethical. It is not safe. We can do better. Thank you for listening.